to Adam, and Officer Brittany Johnson, who rushed Adam to the hospital in the back of her patrol vehicle, and Officer Matt Zarillo, who bravely stopped the defendant's violent rampage through the city, and all of the brothers and sisters of law enforcement who went into action that day to apprehend the defendant and who came to court to honor the memory of Adam Jobbers Miller. The actions of the defendant on July 21st, 2018 impacted so many lives as well as our entire community. Officer Adam Jobbers Miller was upholding his oath to preserve, protect, and serve when he was executed in a malicious and violent act. He lost his life protecting us. Let us all remember what law enforcement does for us every single day, oftentimes making the ultimate sacrifice like Adam did. We did seek the death penalty against this defendant, but the jury did not make the unanimous findings necessary under the law at the time we tried this case for a death sentence. Nevertheless, we respect their decision and I thank them for their very hard work on this case. The defendant will never again taste freedom. His view will be concrete walls and bars for the rest of his life. I hope that today's sentencing being, bring some sense of peace and solace to our community, to all of you, and especially to you, David and Nicole, as I know the loss is so deep, as you were a father to him and a wonderful sister to him. Now I would like Interim Chief Randy Pepitone to come forward to just say a few words on behalf of our law enforcement family. Thank you. On behalf of the members of the Fort Myers Police Department, I would like to thank State Attorney uh, Amira Fox and Assistant State Attorney Andreas Gardner for the hard work and dedication they've displayed over the years it's taken to get to this point. Since the very beginning, we had full confidence in the judicial process and we knew that justice would be served by or for Adam. Um, I can only hope that the conclusion of this trial can bring some sense of closure to the grieving family and the members of our department. The one thing I am sure of, that the ultimate sacrifice made by Officer Adam Jobbers Miller on that July 2018 evening will never be forgotten. Thank you. As this day and this case come to an end, I want to remind all of you, I think you already know this, but I want to remind you again, that Adam Jobbers Miller was a true, true hero who was performing his official duties in trying to stop the absolute chaos caused by a violent defendant who was just feet away from a very busy populated roadway and many, many other innocent people. Adam's heroic actions in a dangerous, an erratic situation exemplified what it is to be a law enforcement officer and he will forever be remembered. Thank you everybody. I will take a few questions. Uh, I will be the one taking questions if you all have any regarding the sentence or anything else. So it was, a, it was a difficult trial. I know many of you watched it. It was a difficult trial. The U.S. Constitution says that a defendant has the right to represent themselves. As you saw, Judge Branning conducted many, many inquiries of the defendant as to whether or not he wanted a lawyer. He did it at every crucial stage of the proceeding, as is required. Mr. Desmarais chose to represent himself, and certainly it was not an ideal situation for any of us to behold that. 
Uh, however, we always uh, treat everybody equally in the courtroom, and we treated him as if he was defense counsel and made very sure that we did everything we could, Mr. Gardner and I, to protect his rights as well as the rights of the victim's family. So we feel that that was done very well and that certainly um, there, there was no issue with that. The state attorney, um, Fox, um, I'm glad you did mention that because it brings me to my question. You know, earlier he did state that um, he didn't feel like there was any legal evidence and felt like he was wrongfully prosecuted and shouldn't have been able to defend himself. How do you respond? Well, I mean, unfortunately for Mr. Desmarais, there's such a thing as police body cameras, and the evidence on, in this case was strong. I mean, his act of executing Officer Jobbers Miller was on body cam, and the jury saw it. That was certainly one piece of the evidence. There was other evidence, and the jury was able to see all of that, obviously. He sat through the entire trial representing himself. He saw what all the evidence was against him. And it was clear, obviously, to a jury of 12 people that he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt on all these counts. Yes? What is your reaction to hearing his appellate attorney say he's going to build his case around the fact that he wasn't reevaluated when he said he was doing So, well, here's my reaction. So Mr. Desmarais was numerous times during this process evaluated for competency to stand trial in the first place. He was evaluated by a doctor for intellectual disability and they found he did not have one. He was evaluated three other times by doctors as to whether or not he was competent to stand trial. Even the doctor hired by the defense when he was represented by defense counsel found him competent to stand trial. He was then found further competent to represent himself in trial by a doctor. So my response to that is that Mr. Desmarais sat through the trial and he was able to stand up and uh, testify on his own behalf. And it was only at a point when he realized, in my opinion, that things were not going well for him that he said he was hearing voices. And that will be up to a different court to determine if that's grounds for any kind of appeal. I would strongly suggest that it's not. In your career, have you ever been faced with anything like this? No, this was the first time in my career on this type of a case, which is the most serious case that we ever face as prosecutors, a first-degree murder, a first-degree murder of a law enforcement officer. I have never had a case where somebody was pro se, meaning they represented themselves. Uh, again, I feel that the judge crossed every T and dotted every I that he needed to in making sure that Mr. Desmarais was given a fair trial. But I think that for many of us here in the community, this was the first time we had seen something along these lines. Ms. Fox? Yes. Um, this trial took place just days before a new uh, law took effect. In That's the right. Um, you know, how do you and the family of Davos Mayer feel? Do you feel that justice was ultimately served? Or, you know, kind of what is your reaction taking the other um, thing into account? Well, we do feel that justice was served because we put this in the hands of a jury as we have to, and the jury came back with what their conclusion was, which was a decision that they did not unanimously vote for the death penalty. Since the time we tried this case, the death penalty law in the state of Florida has changed. In fact, our office just did a death penalty trial a week ago that concluded two weeks ago now, where a jury vote of 10 to uh, 2 was sufficient to recommend the death penalty to the judge for sentencing. And that case is still pending for sentencing. However, in this case, that was not the law at the time we tried the case. And we all respect up here what the law was at the time we tried the case. We have no choice but to respect that. And this jury did not unanimously find that the aggravators outweighed the mitigators, the mitigators being uh, the mental health of Mr. Desmarais, and thus their recommendation was, or did, they did not even get to that recommendation. So we all accept that. Uh, of course, we've had many discussions about it. We all accept it. We respect and accept what the jury did. We do believe justice was served. And we do believe that justice is served when Desmarais will never, ever see the light of day again. And we are, we are all satisfied with that. Are you able to share, do you know what the final back and forth was? Like you mentioned 10 to 2 for the other case. Do you know what those numbers were here? So I only know what I know from your uh, reporting. And I saw in one of your reports that a few of the jurors, maybe one of the alternates and one of the other jurors, may have spoken to some of the media. And there was, it was said in that story, if that was accurate, that there was a nine to three split in this case. But that again, I got that from your reporting. So I'll rely on you all if that was accurate or not. I have not spoken to any of the jurors. 
Any other questions? Yes, Claire. Is this the outcome you expected? Expected when? Today at the sentencing, you no, mean? No, in the beginning. I know you all were obviously hoping for you know, the death penalty. Is this, you know, so we, we absolutely sought the death penalty. We thought it was more than appropriate in this case. We knew, as we always did going forward under the former death penalty statute, that it is very, very difficult to get a unanimous death penalty vote, no matter what the circumstances of the case were. I mean, it was because of the Parkland case and not being able to get a unanimous vote that our legislature has now said, well, wait a minute, we're not going to let a few jurors make the decision. We're going to make it an eight to four. And obviously, under the eight to four, this would have been a death recommendation, if that's accurate, that our jury was a nine to three. It's changed now. Uh, we did not just necessarily expect that a jury would return a recommendation for death going in. We never just expect that. We knew under the unanimous statute that it is very difficult in any case to get 12 people to agree on the death penalty. The death penalty is a, has always been and will continue to probably be controversial. And some people just would never, under any circumstances, vote for it, even if they tell you in jury selection that they would. Once they're faced with it, things change sometimes. This may be a little off the beat a little bit, but in 2018, Chief Diggs was still um, with us, and this is one of his, his people, his family. That's right. I think maybe he's smiling down knowing that justice has finally been served to protect his family. I hope so. I can say that all of us standing up here dearly loved Chief Diggs. And we all miss him very, very much. And we hope that he is watching this from above and being very satisfied as we are to see the day when Desmarais goes away to prison for the rest of his life. All right. Well, I thank all of you very much for coming and for your attention during this trial. It's important for the community to see when we lose one of our beloved officers. And I appreciate all the coverage that you gave this. Thank you. Thank you.